इंद्रजीत सर कैन आई स्टार्ट नाउ आई थिंक वी आर लेट तो वी कैन आई कैन स्टार्ट नाउ अदरवाइज टाइम विल बी लेफ्ट yes ma'am okay thank you sir i dr renu gupta assistant professor bmu on the behalf of bmu university welcome dr gaurav gupta in the four week orientation program on topic publication ethics and research dr gaurav gupta has earned a doctorate in the area of marketing from patiala university patiala he has also studied marketing at the prestigious Wilkes University, Pennsylvania, U.S. Professor Gaurav Gupta has presented his research paper at I am Ahmedabad, I am Indore, I am Bangalore, and had been included in the paper review panel of many Scopus Index journals. His papers has been published in ABDC listed Scopus Index journals. He is also acting as an editor with the Tyler and Pratik Group. He is a recipient of various fellowships. Those are being awarded by European Union and IIM Bank. He got an offer of a doctorate fellowship from ICSSR, Ministry of HRD, India. He has also appointed as a member of advisory board for Cleveland Land Professional University, US. Presently, he is associated with MIT University, Noida. and has worked with christ university previously his teaching training researching and consulting interest including brand management marketing research methodology and management case site also he has published about half a dozen research paper in leading journals and has made presentation at several international national seminars and con he is here with us today to enlighten us with his views on the topic publication ethics definition introduction and importance of publication let us welcome him with a huge round of applause sir thank you very much for your precious time so and now i will hand over to mike to use now you can sir thank you ma'am thanks a lot uh thanks for your warm welcome and uh, i am glad that i got the podium to speak on the research ethics and in the such a great university so if someone can confirm it's your uh, if i am perfectly audible and visible sir you are perfectly audible and visible both things are thank okay thank you thanks a lot so i would uh, like if i check the time it's 11:51 and uh, i have a practically one hour with me right uh, so i will yes. try to keep uh, the session as interactive as possible so i request all the participant to please be attentive so that we can discuss more on the discussion based because um, i was uh, hearing the last lecture so many things have been covered over there about the ethics and all so i shall be covering more points that uh, i can uh, create a value for you but to start with if i just ask you in a simpler terms when the this word comes the research ethics what comes in your mind just a quick uh, responses maybe in the chat box and side by side you can ask the questions so that the extra time would not be there in the end so uh, what is research ethics according to you just a simpler words if someone can respond what is research ethics or the publication ethics plagiarism okay free from plagiarism anything else my i again <coughs> repeat the question if someone can just tell me what is uh, the publication ethics or research accurate and ethical reporting okay research with honesty principles followed during the research study okay just give me a minute so that i can also share my screen i hope it's visible yes sir okay so no biasness uh, 
रिसर्च शुड बी यूज फॉर सोसाइटी ओके फेब्रिकेशन शुड नॉट बी देर what morality right or wrong okay okay uh, before going ahead you all are saying whatever you are saying is correct uh, just want to know have you come across anything unethical in research maybe you do not take any name or something uh, have you come across any unethical practices we talk about ethics and uh, and all that but have you come across anywhere any anything have you noticed that is unethical <coughs> not yet okay sir unethical sometimes uh, scholars they can they are copying the same material from the other sources they are taking the same topics everything is the same so yeah. i have seen someone some people they mm. are doing like that okay so copying basically uh, seems to be a great uh, menace uh, like great hindrance like you copy from one paper to another uh, okay uh, just a practicality i just want to show just give me a minute uh, i was searching yesterday and i came across uh, just give me a minute okay let me just share my screen again now this is just a practical example is a uh, sage journal mdi gurgaon it's a famous uh, business school now it says uh, retraction notice here now what is retraction retraction means suppose i have published my paper right and uh, if the journal comes to know that i have uh, copied from somewhere then they have to take that uh, publication back and there will be a repercussions for the uh, authors as well this is just one example in front of you that what happens if we copy anything and that comes in the knowledge of uh, that comes in the knowledge of journal so what do you think what could be the consequences of this kind of copying one is yes your paper is gone what could be the other consequences that you can imagine my question is this is just an example in front of you that uh, this journal has got some new, uh, some information that the article they have published has been copied by someone else right uh, so they have just taken this article back from their uh, from their website so this is one repercussion what could be the other repercussions repercussions means consequences if this comes into light that i have copied my psd i have copied the paper what could be the other consequences uh, that we can imagine anyone okay uh, so i just request everyone to please be attentive so that we can interact and we can discuss uh, if uh it comes to know that uh, suppose i have copied my uh, suppose i have published one research paper that was copied right if someone complains even uh, i can lose my job i uh, i can be banned from teaching for next 5 years and uh, i will not be allowed to guide the phds and all so it will be a dent to a uh, our image obviously but uh, the practical repercussions will be that even the government jobs will be at stake it's not only the private but the government job because ugc has a very strict guidelines ki if uh, uh, you find out any kind of plagiarism then there will be a severe repercussions right so those things we are going to discuss today ki what ethics we should keep in mind so that we should not face any kind of problem whenever we are doing the research right so let's go ahead uh, like you people said what is ethics so quickly like i have was supposed to discuss the definition just give me a minute yeah so ethics is the discipline discipline study of morality and morality asks the question what should one's behavior be so ethics just talks about 
कि वट शुड वी डू एंड वट वी शुडन डू राइट दीज आर एथिक्स एंड रिसर्च एथिक्स is as simple as that when we are conducting the research what we should do and what we should not do let's go ahead and understand uh what are the various research ethics right so simply just going through this uh slide quickly uh ethics are the set of rules that governs our expectations second point research ethics are the set of ethical guidelines that guide us on how scientific research should be conducted third research ethics govern the standards of conduct for scientific research so there are three points these are rules these are guidelines these are governing things that we should keep in mind while conducting the research right now who decides this can anyone tell me i am talking about research ethics i am talking about rules i am talking about regulations who decides this do i decide this do is there any governing body who decides this is there international body national body who decides the research ethics if this should be done this shouldn't be done who decides this <coughs> anyone governing body sir okay so there are two three things that we should keep in mind one is ugc we are staying in india right so we should keep the ugc guidelines regarding to the plagiarism regarding to the phd this is number one but when we say publishing in the international journals right international journals for example emerald for example in the science anything over there ugc guidelines will not matter what matters is the guidelines by that particular journal right country will not intervene somewhere but the general code of conduct that is being given by cop e various agencies that may be the next lecture shall be talking more about it right so they have that kind of guidelines and every journal has one tab if you open the uh, website of any journal you will see the code of conduct you will see the guidelines of that particular journal so what they think and how they want to do the things so you have to keep both the things in mind ugc as well as that particular journal okay now what why there is a need of research ethics to guard or protect the human participants their dignity rights and welfare now i am from the business background i may not understand this in a very great manner this particular point right but those who are from the sciences background psychology uh, from the vaccinations point of view and all that they will particularly understand this first point right to guard or protect the human participants for example we all have seen the time of covid right so when the news of vaccinations were coming in the news one thing you must have noticed that trials are going on right trials are going on before the vaccinations have come into the market trials are going on where the trials were going at the human beings first maybe to the some animals but then to the human beings so while doing the trials on the human beings you should be a very careful uh, at that time ki you should be telling everything that what should be the uh, guidelines we shall be discussing in this lecture the only thing here i want to uh, discuss is ki human participation where there is a human participation as a subject right you should be very careful and there should be a proper ethical code code of conduct and you should uh, abide that their dignity rights and welfare dignity means they should be treated not as an animals but as the that the part of the community only what happens is why i am saying that their dignity and welfare i don't know if you have seen one web series there is a one uh, web series on hotstar named as human in that web series uh what they have shown that uh, the 
the those who make the vaccination they go to the people uh, in the slum areas and they give the money to the people and by giving the money they inject the injections to those uh, people just to see the results of that particular injection or vaccination because they are not economically well that doesn't mean that they do not have the right to live right or when they are economically poor that doesn't mean they are not human right so we should keep the dignity that if you are taking some human being as a subject right so you should be very much conscious and you should be taking care of the dignity second point is to make sure that now we are doing the objective of research ethics what are the objectives the first was to protect the human participation the second is to make sure that research is directed on a manner that assists the welfare of person groups and or civilization as a whole right like in the previous slide also we discussed that why you need the research the most important point is for the welfare and in one of the answers also one of the participant also uh, uh my slides are not visible uh, some few participants are saying it's not visible so that is uh, first slide is there only distortion one that is that slide is only there it is not changed okay now it's changing objective of research ethics uh, is this visible now no okay let me just share it again give me a minute now it is clear sir that is objectives of research okay. Okay. so i just keep like this only <clears throat> from the participants yeah okay now okay so apologies because you were not able to see it uh anyways uh just a quick repeat what we have done i did discuss the research ethics right you will get the slides so you can refer to those now we are on the objectives of research ethics uh the first was to protect the human participation the second is uh the research is for the social well being the third is to inspect particular research events and schemes for their ethical reliability considering issues such as controlling risk protection of privacy and the progression of informed consent now what are all these big words are we will discuss one by one but uh to cut the story short what this point says to inspect particular research events inspect inspect means uh inspect means to uh, monitor monitoring means if the research is uh happening all right or not right suppose like i say some research is uh is happening in the space uh for the space exploration some research is happening uh for the uh, for the human beings or something so you should be checking again and again if the things are doing in the right manner or not if anything goes in a, wrong in the any stage there will be a great repercussions right so we are like i said i am from the management background so in the management research the things are very different but if we talk about the sciences background right the things can be very different because if you go wrong in at any stage there will be a huge repercussions right so uh, research ethics are required in those areas uh, so principles of research ethics i think in the last lecture uh, you have got to know this i just move ahead <clears throat> okay uh by now anyone uh, would like to ask any question i will uh, i will be just asking you all ki okay if you have any questions please ask simultaneously i will take the questions maybe in the end also but if just all of sudden because when we are listening to any lecture some questions comes in our mind we want to ask at that time 
So if you have any questions right now, uh, you can ask me. Uh, otherwise, I will move ahead. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate. Even regarding the ethics or something, anything comes in your mind. Okay. Okay, I just want to ask you people um, before going ahead, have you collaborated with anyone for doing research? When I say collaborated, uh, first let's take the example, suppose uh, uh, we are in the same college or same university. Uh, okay, I, Anita, just answer your question. Just give me a minute. Let me just complete this. Uh, uh, suppose we are doing the uh, research in the same university or in the same department, suppose we all are friends and we write a paper all together. Uh, have you done this? Uh, anyone? Okay, okay, let's come together and write the paper. And we, what kind of research ethics can come in between? Suppose I say to uh, my friend, okay, let's write a paper together. What kind of ethics I should keep in mind? All of you are doing coursework now. Okay. okay how many of you think uh, that while uh, writing a paper, your guide name should come at the top? Suppose there are two or three authors, and one is your guide, PhD guide. How many of you think uh, writing uh, the first name as a guide? Uh, is an unethical or an, uh, is an ethical? I'm uh, asking a very difficult question. I don't know. Uh, but still, if someone wants to answer this, is there any uh, unethical in writing a guide's name? Just a simple question. No, it's not unethical. And if someone feels it's unethical, uh, why or why not? Okay, you are unable to understand my question. My question is, suppose uh, uh, we all do PhD, though I have done my PhD, but uh, some of you are doing PhD. And while doing the PhD, uh, you write a paper, right? So putting up your guide's name in the paper is ethical or unethical? This is my question. It's ethical. Okay. Okay. A uh, few things. Uh, if if your work is related to your PhD, right? Then it's to totally ethical. There is no problem in it. But uh, if your guide is forcing you to write the name, uh, his or her name in any of your other work, right? If it's the PhD work, then it's perfectly fine. But if you are doing some another work and another paper, and if your guide is forcing, then it's totally unethical. Number one. Number two, uh, your guide should be uh, guiding you in some way or another way to write the paper, right? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe just a grammar correction or maybe uh, anything. There should be some kind of contribution of your guide. Then his or her name should come. And uh, writing the guide's name as the first author always is not mandatory right and if any supervisor forces then it's an unethical thing right number three from the uh, from the point of view of the scholars if scholar just put the name of the guide and uh, sent it to the publisher it's a unethical he or she should First, consult with the guide. Ki, okay, this is the paper. I am putting up, uh, I'm putting up your name, and I am sending it to the journal. This should be the right way. You just put the name of the guide and just 
uh, sent it to the journal and it got published and guy doesn't know anything right what kind of journal it is and all that then it's totally an unethical and it can be a devastating for your career why i'm saying devastating because it has happened uh, it's a seems to be a very uh, uh, very uh, what you can say normal thing that you just write a paper and put up the name of your guide and just get it published right it happens that one guide got so annoyed that he wrote to the journal that uh, this is not my paper my consent has not been taken and uh, i do not endorse this paper so this should be taken back so that paper uh, so that was a lot of repercussions on the uh, scholar happened right so you should take care uh, while consulting with your guide anyways uh, why why do the research ethics matters because uh, like few lines have been highlighted to prevent permanent or excessive harm to the particip participants scientific integrity human rights etc etc that we have already discussed many things we just uh, due to the taking the time consideration uh, typical ethical issues uh, these are the main agenda uh, of our today's lecture uh, voluntary participation uh, should be taken care now what is voluntary participation that if someone opted to be a part of your research right suppose i i give the consent okay if you are doing a uh, suppose you are doing a research in psychology for example or you are doing some medicinal research i give the consent uh, suppose i just give the example of psychology i give the consent okay i will be a subject you can ask me the questions and you can record while the research happens and it goes on and on i feel uncomfortable that i do not want to give the answer to someone right he or she is asking some personal question or whatever the reason is i want to withdraw so research ethics says that you should allow the participant to be withdrawn you should allow and there should not be any threat there should not be anything else right we are just going to discuss this in a detail informed consent informed consent means you should be telling the participant uh, that uh, the research is been done due to this purpose i give you one one example i do not know how many of you have heard this there was a uk company called cambridge analytica cambridge analytica uh, and the short form is ca and donald trump had faced a lot of issues what happened was to know the behavior of the people of america what they did they run a survey on a facebook right and they run a survey in the form of game ki okay if you fill the survey you will win something or something people didn't know that their information was shared with the team of donald trump to analyze their personality right they didn't know people just filled the survey or filled the questions just they believed and that this is just a game but their information was taken and analyzed to know the behavior to know the personality of the various us citizens so that the donald trump can make promises or whatever various things according to what they want so here there was a unethical in the research thing people didn't know that they are giving the information because of this reason right they didn't know they just give the information because they believe that they are just playing the game so in your research it's very important that whatever the data you are collecting you should tell the subject you should tell the respondent that you are collecting the data for this 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 purpose right you should not be hiding anything from that participant <coughs> third is anonymity anonymity means some researches may require some anonymous use for example if i am doing the, some criminal research so if i am asking some questions from the big big shots of police for example from dcp acp etc etc so i should not be quoting their name right 
If I'm doing again, I'm giving the example of psychological research. If I'm doing some research on psychology, it's my responsibility. Whatever responses I have recorded, it's just for the research. I should not be telling anything. Right? If I have some sources, I should not be telling anything. Same way, the other points, confidentiality, the same. I should be taking care of the matter that with information that I have collected is confidential. Potential for harm, I should take care, like I said in the vaccination research, I should take care that people should not be harmed by anything or people or the human should be treated as human. The last but not the least point is the results communication. Now, this is very important and it's related to the plagiarism. I take this point first. Right, then I will take other points. Have you heard this term self plagiarism? I again repeat my uh, question. Have you heard this term called self plagiarism? Now, what is self plagiarism? Self plagiarism means, for example, you have written one paper, right? Now you have written one paper, now you want to write another paper. Right now, you just copy and paste from first paper that is yours only, and you have pasted the same thing in your second paper. Do you think it's ethical or unethical? I again repeat my question. I have written one paper. Now I want to write another paper. Now I just copy and paste the information that I have used in one paper and paste it in another paper. What do you think about it? It's unethical. Yeah. Yeah, Anita, you are right. So UGC has proper self plagiarism guidelines, right? Earlier there was no guidelines of self plagiarism by UGC. Now it has. Now, <clears throat> what should I do to uh, take care of this issue? Suppose even if I want to take something from my own written paper, right? I can take how in a similar manner, like I take the information from any other paper, right? How do I take the information from another paper? I read that some particular paper, write in my own words, proper I properly I cite that paper give it in the references, right? In a similar manner, I can take the information from my own paper, but not in the copy paste manner, but in my own words, I can rewrite it and then I can cite it. And then I can put the references here. And then it will be a perfectly all right. Thing. Then it will not be an unethical thing because I'm properly citing it giving it references, giving uh, all due credits to other co-authors as well. So then there will not be any kind of problem. But yes, if I just copy paste it, then there will be a problem. Similarly, you should take care while you write the PhD thesis. So we say that from the PhD thesis, we can write the paper. Yes, you can write the paper. But this self plagiarism guidelines, you should be taking care of because what happens is, <coughs> suppose you submit the thesis and you have already published the paper, then the thesis will be showing a huge amount of plagiarism, right? You should be a very conscious while submitting the paper and while submitting the thesis, right? If you have published the paper and the same as it is, you have written in the thesis the plagiarism software will catch and they will the plagiarism software will not treat it as the unique thing they the plagiarism software will take it as plagiarism and you will be stuck over it, right so please note down in your notes that you should take care of the self plagiarism right so the last point is result communication that i should be taking first that talks about the uh just give me a minute. Yeah. 
ethical issues in result communication. Right? Now, what it says, the way you communicate your research results can sometimes involve ethical issues. Good science communication is honest, reliable, and credible. Take steps to actively avoid plagiarism and research misconduct. Right? Plagiarism, you all know. Self plagiarism that I have just explained. <coughs> And research misconduct means making up the falsifying data, manipulating data analysis, or misrepresenting the results in research reports. Now, misrepresentation of the research. Suppose many researchers do an unethical practices, like what? Suppose I have a good knowledge of statistics. Right? I know how to play with the numbers. Right? I just manipulate the data. Manipulate the data means I have imagined the result in my mind that this should be the result. Now, when I put up the analysis, that kind of result is not coming up. So I just change the figures by my own in that cell sheet or in that PSS sheet. And then I run the result and I just do whatever has to be done to get those results. That is manipulation of data that shouldn't be there. Right? These actions are committed intentionally and can have serious consequences. Research misconduct is not a simple mistake or a point of disagreement about data analysis. So don't if anyone reports that misconduct or if anyone reports that uh, this is an uh, manipulative data. So just give me a minute. Let me know if it is visible. Uh, someone has requested to uh, make a full screen. Ethical issues in result communication. This is the slide title. If it is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. So you should not be playing with the numbers. And number two, unethical practices is what happens is I have seen uh, many papers because I do review the papers that today in the social science research and in the management research, there is a fashion, I would use the word fashion, of structural equation modeling or uh, CFA, EFA, these are the techniques. So what happens is the people, they just copy and paste the tables, the figures from here and there, and just change the values to add the plagiarism. Just change the values in the model and they just change the values in the Excel sheet or they just change nothing else. So sometimes I do ask the um, author, okay, share the actual Excel sheet. And the good journals do ask for the actual Excel data or actual responses data. Suppose I come from a management background, I do a survey research. And I say, okay, I have done a 500 respondent research. So the general can ask me, show me the actual data from where you have got. What the people do, they do a survey of 60 people, extrapolate it and make it as a 500 people research. So this is a misrepresentation. This is a misconduct. This is unethical. We should not be doing this. Whatever you have done, 400 people, 300 people, 100 people, show it like that only. Right? In the management research or social research, this is an unethical practices, but in the medical research, this could be a lot of repercussion on the actual thing. Right? So uh, please be cautious. <coughs> so ethical issues in research, results communication is, to cut the story short, you should be telling the actual results. It should not be manipulated. It should not be uh as like fraudulent it should not be just a copy paste and it should not be just a changing the figure it should be actually done it should be actually communicated whatever you have done right so please don't involve in any kind of malpractices just give me a minute
okay so few examples <coughs> let me just share this uh this is the example of 1998 when some researchers found out that vaccination can cause the autism in the children right he revealed that data during the covid time uh, many news were there ki q employ the injection of vaccination there could be a repetition and all that many news were there but what was the authenticity no it was just a news that was spreading around you should not put the vaccination this will cause this effect this will cause this effect this was just a communication bad communication uh, mal practice communication and all that you can say that was not true similar example is this in front of you that uh, the vaccination that for the measles mumps and all that can cause the autism there was not a very concrete uh research was done but the results that was communicated were fabricated were manipulated right it was not the properly done research right it was a very badly communicated one example that comes in still uh, i can recall there was a lot of news flash over there that uh women in india feels unsafe and uh, india is the country which is most uh is not uh, secure for the women in the world it has been ranked even below afghanistan even if it has uh, ranked below syria etc etc not just think of the situation yes situation of women may not be a great in india but it is not bad below than afghanistan and syria and other countries so how did this research came and why the media was talking about because it was got published somewhere in a good journal now when uh, the people research more dig down into the this communication research communication it was just a perception survey perception survey perception survey means what i think now whose perception survey maybe few people from uk maybe few people from us and other countries the very selective people right 20 25 people so what was the research was done 25 women were gathered from uk us etc etc agency made a phone call and they asked the question you okay, what you perceive about india so they gave some answers and that agency just collected the data and gave the report in the media now that was totally a political agenda some opposition party made this research happened and communicated so this was a totally an unethical practices because just on the basis of 25 interviews and on the basis of just a perception we are giving some results that was a research perfectly fine but survey was done but was that accurately done the sample size was good or not or you are just giving a statement based on just a few interviews and everyone was just talking about that people <coughs> the maximum people feel that uh, that india is unsafe for women even below even uh, afghanistan is good uh, even the syria is good so this is the unethical practices in the research communication right any questions you want to ask any questions okay i, so I, I think there's no question okay uh just give me a minute i just change the slide so uh, research communication is very uh, typical you will see a lot of media reports but you should dig down what exactly this report means just give me a second so uh, we were doing this ethical issues in research the last point we have covered voluntary participation uh like i discussed this in my earlier 
uh, slides as well. Voluntary participation means I have volunteered for the participation for the research. I can withdraw any time. There is no obligation on me. And the researcher should not put any kind of pressure that you should participate. Ethically, I should not do. If the participant wants to withdraw at any point of time, he or she can withdraw from that particular research. Right? This kind of withdrawal generally happens in the psychology research, in the medicinal research, right? Because uh, uh, people do not sometimes you know, feel comfortable to do the research. I still remember there was a research that uh, on the sleeping behavior or on the dreams, how the dreams comes, right? So uh, a person, they want to check the actually a brain imaging or brain responses, even any kind of bad dreams comes or any kind of good dreams comes and how the brain reacts. That kind of research was going on. <coughs> and the, how the research was going on, I am sleeping and a lot of wires were put on my head. Now, I can be a very uncomfortable. First, I could have given the consent, but someone has put a lot of wire and I am sleeping and while sleeping, I feel a lot of uncomfortableness. So I can say no at any time, at any time. No one should uh, force me. So if someone force you, okay, no, 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 you have given the consent, you have signed the paper and all that. This is totally unethical. right? So uh, volunteers have the, it's on jurisdiction that you or she can say no. I don't want to be a part of this research, right? Now, second thing is uh, when recruiting the participant for an experiment, you inform all the potential participants that they are free to choose whether they want to be participate or not, right? You should be very clear and crystal clear <coughs> that while choosing the participants, what are good, what are bad, uh, their name should be revealed, their name should not be revealed, etc. Same thing uh, in the slide. Informed consent and all that, that we have discussed. So uh, next point, anonymity. Anonymity means anonymous. That uh, while doing the research, you may keep the participant as anonymous. Right? You can give the guarantee to the participant that your name should be anonymous. Like I gave the example, this kind of research, when we do, uh, like I was just, uh, I was just uh, watching one, uh, again, a web series yesterday on the Netflix, Netflix name, the Spoop. So over there, the lot of things are being shown that how the reporters in the journalism, particularly in the journalism research, uh, in the crime research and all that, uh, people, uh, do not want to come in front right they do not want to, their name should come in front so you will see a lot of uh, researches nowadays happen in the uh, uh, what you can say in terms of the journalism research or in the this web series do a lot of research sometimes you see they put the person face on blur or they say anonymous or they say that uh, People do not want to reveal the name in the newspapers and all. You will see a newspaper report. So why this happens? Because uh, because the researchers gives the guarantee your name will not come. Right? So you should take care. If people are reluctant, <coughs> you should not be giving their names. So in the research papers also, normal research papers also. Suppose I am doing the research on religion and consumer behavior in the management research. Sometimes uh, I have, I still remember I designed a question here uh, on the taboos. Taboos means he, some religious religions do not allow uh, some things to happen. So I was just designed the question here to just note what are the taboos uh, in their religion. So when I just floated the question here, so uh, people were skeptical he, if they will talk about their religion and if their name will come. Uh, will that the harm will happen or not then i personally assured them that their name will not come and if they do not want to write their name it's perfectly fine so when i just recorded their response and put up in the actual paper i said participant a participant b participant c so i didn't put up their names 
so it depends upon the research to research and depends upon uh, the wish of the uh, the individual but if the individual wants to be anonymous we should be doing all the practices that their name should be anonymous data pseudo uh, like pseudo names pseudo means <coughs> not the actual name right? if you have to use the name uh, but you do not want to use the actual name you can just use a pseudo name pseudo name means fake name right so in all the newspaper again coming to the journalism research and all that many pseudo names have been used not the actual name. The same thing, confidential data. It's my responsibility that I should keep the data confidential. I should not be leaking that data. Suppose I have gathered the data for the 500 consumers. Right? Now it's my responsibility that I should not be selling that data. Right? Many companies does that. And many companies, uh, it's a debate all around. Suppose you install the Make My Trip, um, what you can say, an application. While downloading the application, I tick mark that my data can be shared with the third parties. We get a lot of uh, fake calls, not the fake calls, but the marketing calls. Please take the credit card, credit card, insurance, and all that. Data milta hai, suppose my policy bazaar.com pe gaya, many apni details dali. Wo details onone kisi orko sell kar di, ya company ne sell nahi ki, kisi customer care executive ne aake sell kar di. Many Vodafone ka connection liya, mera sari details hai, geo ke pass chali gayi. Kaise chali jati hai, kyun ki koi sell out kar di ta. That is totally unethical. <coughs> it's a lot of debate and uh, but selling my data my information is totally my means in journal as a common customer as a common thing it's not at all ethical okay the slides are visible the slide title is confidentiality Okay, this we have discussed. So like uh, I have already discussed that there could be a failure or this is the time of failure that uh, Nazi doctors and researchers performed painful and horrific experiments on thousands of imprisoned people in the concentration camps. That was unhuman. <clears throat> I was just giving you the example also of the web series called Human, where they have shown that vaccinations have been put on the uh, the unprivileged people just to take the results. So that is not the good thing. That is totally unethical, inhuman, and unlawful as well. Right? So while conducting the research, we should keep these points in mind. Valid research design. Opt for the theory, method, and practices that has been done before, that is reliable. You should not be conducting the research in just a year, right? <coughs> you should be reading the good journals. You should be reading the good papers. Whatever the methodology has been applied in those research papers, those are actually validated. Validated, I'm using that word. You should be incorporating those methods. Suppose I have to interview someone. What are the guidelines of the interview? Should I record? Shouldn't I record? What should I keep in mind? And all that. So I should take care of those. Competence of researcher. Am I competent enough, especially in the medical research, psychological research? Am I competent enough to ask the questions from the respondent so that they should not feel bad about it? 
am i competent a good doctor or competent doctor am i qualified doctor to conduct a research on the anyone regarding the vaccination and all that just a minute few questions sir q karte hain detail share third party ko because they get a profit <coughs> that's why they share kitna reh gaya sir uh, just maybe a couple of minutes more i know the time okay. identification and consequences selection of subject so these all points we have discussed that uh, everyone should know what could be the consequences if they are uh, they are uh, being treated as a subject agar vaccination research hai aap ek volunteer karte hain aapko pata hona chahiye ki ya hame batana chahiye usko ki kya kya repercussions ho sakte hain kis tarah ke side effects aa sakte hain all that aapko proper form साइन करवाना चाहिए आपको बताना चाहिए कि आपका डेटा शेयर होगा या नहीं होगा अगर होगा तो किसको होगा वो सब गाइडलाइंस हैं हर तरीके की रिसर्च की राइट सो ब्रॉडली दिस वॉज एट रिगार्डिंग दी एथिक्स इन रिसर्च इन अ प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ इफ वी आर नॉट फ्रॉम द मेडिकल बैकग्राउंड एंड ऑल the main thing we should keep in mind is few things to conclude while collecting the data you should not be manipulating that data you should not be cheating with data you should not be cheating with the model research model and all that you should not be cheating with the results it should be very fair number 2 uh, if you are taking the responses you should be telling your data will be used where how and all that third thing plagiarism plagiarism you all know what is a plagiarism i believe so take care of that plagiarism take care of self plagiarism take care of the result communication that is most important okay anything you would like to ask okay there are few question anju what is the solution what is the solution of that problem because without acceptance we are not able to use application yeah true well uh, i do not know uh, honestly what is the solution because i am customer of all those things the only solution the practical solution as a customer as a normal human being that i can do is opt for do not disturb message or do not disturb uh services every telecom company gives that service you just check suppose uh, i am using the airtel service i just search how to opt for do not disturb when we say do not disturb these marketing company cannot disturb us cannot call us how because every marketing company every company has been their numbers are been registered with telecom authority of india so if they are been registered as the business or the service provider if we have opted for the do not disturb service they cannot call us this is the only way though that was not a very big scope of our lecture we are <coughs> but anything related to uh, the ethics in research and all please do ask me anything related to uh, the plagiarism anything related to the conducting the interview research anything related to the questionnaire research or anything that you want to ask maybe beyond this ethics in research you can ask me uh, maybe i can add value uh, anything beyond this topic if you want to ask me anything uh, so that uh, anything dilemma comes in your mind while writing the research paper any dilemma comes in your mind uh, while putting on the names of the authors any dilemmas or any confusion dilemma means confusion comes in your mind how to avoid plagiarism the only only way of avoiding plagiarism is write in your own words there is no another way practically 
to just read, understand, and write in your own words. That is the only way. It's difficult, but that is the only way. And we should practice this, right? Uh, this is just a practice. He, uh, we should read, understand, and write. <coughs> Initially, it seems to be difficult, but when you will practice it, uh, this will become habit, and you will feel good. And no one can question. And uh, another thing that we should keep in mind generally in the chapters or in papers, we just sometimes we copy some figures from one research paper to our research paper, some images. Please, for God's sake, don't do that because that will create a lot of trouble because all the images are copyrighted. And we cannot use those images without the permission. Thanks, Bharti, for your appreciation. Okay, uh, I am open to the questions. And just last but not the least, you may uh, note down these contact details if you want to in uh, on your screen. Uh, you can contact me uh, maybe for anything related to research i may i may be a good resource if you face any dilemma any confusion any time uh, uh, okay the question is sir we are studying ethics and ethics is everyone follow proper ethics while doing phd yes uh, though I didn't understand your question, I know very well, but what I have understood is that while doing PhD, we should follow the ethics. Yes, we should follow the ethics while doing the PhD. If you can just uh, uh, ask your question again, because I didn't understand your question properly. Thanks, Anshika. Anyone have any doubt? You can write uh, in the chat box. Okay, I think there are no doubts. Uh, no doubt. yes. That's from my side, ma'am. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your time and presence. It really means a lot to us.